It may still be early days with the Galaxy S24 Ultra, but I'm standing on business for my previous hands-on video after spending what is now almost a good two weeks with it to say this is definitely Samsung's phone of the year part two. It isn't of course a perfect device, but in the pursuit of perfection, this is a masterclass in refinement from Samsung and does make this their best ultra phone yet. And no doubt, the flagship phone to beat for 2024. Hi. Ben from Sam Mobile. If you enjoy new and exclusive videos like this, then be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos on YouTube with Sam Mobile TV. Here is our experience review of the Galaxy S24 Ultra. The experience you have with a phone's design and build quality can be very subjective for many reasons. But for me, in this case, personally, I believe this is the best design Samsung have done on their Ultra device yet and balances what everyone has wanted for years into what Samsung are absolutely brilliant at putting together. It's not just the move to a titanium frame, but it's how the shape and the finish of it makes for a pleasing handling experience when using it without a case. Yep, it almost feels criminal to put a case on this device, but this is really down to the matte satin finish and most importantly, the rounded shape of the left and the right side of the frame and how it meets the completely flat front and back of the phone. Of course, depending on how things feel to you, when holding the phone, the corner edges not being rounded like that of the S24 Plus may be something that bothers you or not. Minus the exclusive online colors, I have to say, having the titanium gray color has been a treat and everything else that is a personal preference of me wanting the volume rocker as two separate buttons on the left side, moving the S Pen to the right side and bringing back a fan favorite of mine, which is the IR Blaster. The use of a completely flat front display and the super slim symmetrical borders with all the new improvements makes the experience so good that I seriously wonder, how would it actually improve it next time? This is peak design and build quality from Samsung, and I can't wait to see what they build further on from here. As mentioned before, the S24 Ultra 6.8 inch display has now been redesigned into what is technically the best year on any flagship phone. It may like the absolute swagger and super wow factor that comes with the curved displays we've come to know and love from Samsung since the S6 Edge days, but if you ask me to pick, I'm taking this approach to screen design and display design on the S24 Ultra anytime any day. You may think the obvious star of the show when it comes to the display experience is down to the improved brightness at 2600 nits peak and the super slim symmetrical borders that come with a completely flat display. And you would be right because these things make a difference to the day-to-day -day experience. But no, it's actually the new front glass from Corning known as Gorilla Glass Armor. This new generation of glass is so underrated in the viewing experience that it's almost deserving of the term game changer. Away from all the marketing talk, when you see the difference it makes in things like reducing glare, the improved clarity, and also the perceived brightness being so much better without the need to push brightness higher than usual when in a manual mode makes for the best viewing experience I've had on a smartphone. The end display fingerprint sensor feels as fast as ever if not in some ways faster and more responsive, the small middle hole punch at the top batch with the super slim borders just makes using the display such a treat. And of course, the included S Pen for the display works as great as ever. If there is one drawback people have picked up on when it comes to the S24 Ultra display is the lack of vibrancy compared to the S24 Ultra. Now, I'm not sure if this is an intentional color tuning choice from Samsung this time around or the downside of the new Corning Gorilla Glass Armor, but personally, I'm actually okay with it. On the other hand, I do understand why some missed the trademark vibrant pop of the display in vivid mode. So here's hoping Samsung can actually address it in a software update or improve it in the next model. With that being said, this is the best display on a smartphone right now. Second year running and Samsung's ultra flagship phone is an all Snapdragon experience regardless of where in the world you buy it from and I couldn't be more happy that this is the case. Now, although the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy chipset is still technically on a four nanometer process, it looks like the improvements, the thermal management with Samsung improving the vapor chamber cooling system is really paying off well. Whether gaming over long periods, live streaming on social media, or multitasking thanks to the power of One UI, the S24 Ultra just doesn't skip a beat, and that is to be expected. In fact, 
With software optimization, the new chipset, you really do feel just how much faster and most importantly smoother the overall OS feels when using it even down to the animations. And also places like the camera UI, the performance as expected is top tier and looks like the real focus this time around and transition point for performance is really down to on-device AI executions and feature sets that should hopefully bring new user experiences. After all the extensive testing and time I've had with the S24 Ultra, I couldn't even begin to cover all of what the camera has to offer without making this video review ridiculously long because it really does deserve a dedicated video for it. That being said, I'll talk about the good, the in-between, and also why I believe the changes and improvements Samsung need to make for their Ultra camera system at this current time and also in the future models to really make it great. Let's start with the good. I'm glad to see the return of a 5X dedicated zoom on the Ultra. At least this was based on the last time we saw it from the Note 20 Ultra. Although not perfect and some tuning is needed, this 50 megapixel 5X zoom is a much more usable day-to-day -day focal length than the extreme distance that the 10X zoom brought, especially compared to the 3X zoom. The video quality and also usability improvements with the ability to switch between all the lenses, including the selfie camera when using a 4K60 mode is class leading and makes the S24 Ultra at this time the only smartphone Phone that can do this. The improvements to the pro video mode with the ability to shoot 4K 120 FPS on a wide and ultra wide cameras in its purest form is truly ultra level stuff. And even going as far as shooting 8K 30 FPS video on a 5X zoom with the ability to shoot portrait mode with the 5X lens. Just told you everything you need to know that Samsung left nothing on the table and this truly makes the S24 Ultra one of the most usable and powerful smartphone camera systems to date. Now for the in-between. I appreciate the overall benefits that come with using Expert Raw, as it does actually have the option of a 24 megapixel mode in which you can shoot in both RAW and JPEG. But based on my usage, the capture time and processing time needs work. And personally, I do feel Samsung actually needs to bring this into the main camera app. Now, while the capture speed has greatly improved from the previous S23 Ultra, I feel thanks to the nature of having such a high megapixel main camera to process and deal with, it's still not 100% where it needs to be, even though by default, out of the box, it's a night and day great improvement. Although you can shoot 4K 120 FPS in the normal slow motion mode, it's still limited to just the main wide sensor with no access to the ultra wide, or even considering the 3X or the 5X. As a general blanket statement, as much as I appreciate the camera assistant extension being integrated into the camera settings, I honestly feel this is something that should be there out of the box, rather than having to actually download it from the Galaxy App Store. And this also low key goes for Expert Raw as well. Now, for what really needs to improve for the camera system, more tuning for the 5X zoom in general low light performance when it comes to image processing is still needed. And I think if Samsung had an f2.8 lens instead of an f3.4, this would have been a great help as we're not sure actually what the sensor size and the native pixel size it's working with. As for me, I thought Samsung should really consider doing a complete overhaul on the camera hardware. Having two low resolution sensors at 10 megapixels and 12 megapixels, followed by a high resolution sensor at 50 megapixels and then a super high resolution at 200 megapixels puts the starting point of what the camera has to do for image processing in a very tough place to work with. And I think they need to consider going with an all 48 or 50 megapixel camera system with the largest sensors possible and also the largest native pixels possible before matching the different focal lengths needed. From there, dialing in the speed and image processing consistency, even down to the smoothness of lens transitions with minimal to no color shift would be the real difference maker. Away from that, this is my favorite camera system to date on a smartphone.
artificial intelligence or advanced intelligence. Whichever way you see it, based on what Samsung are calling it, this is the main center of attention when it comes to the software experience of One UI 6.1 this time around. And I have to say, I'm enjoying and finding it way more useful than expected. It wasn't absolutely everything AI-based I used over the two weeks, as I wanted the experience to be organic in situations that I faced and when I needed them. Now, for those times I did, it really showed a great experience. Now, my favorite and most used feature has got to be the right installs and grammar check from Chat Assist. Never has a feature been so useful and also brought a smile to my face for not only making sure my spelling and grammar is correct, but also the tone of my messages being different for the right situations. Having your keyboard tell you how to professionally send a message is something I didn't actually know I needed and wanted until now. And the real shock factor is how well it works. Circle to search with Google is a perfect example of how ease of access and execution makes a world of a difference in making what was already a great feature, being Google Lens much more usable on a daily basis. Now, I can't tell you how many items I've seen that I just couldn't or didn't know the name of that Circle to Search came in handy to help with, which of course aided in my buying habits on Amazon. My recent trip to Leipzig, Germany saw the interpreter come in very handy for communicating with a German local that wasn't so versed in English and the speed, responsiveness, and the ability to flip the screen orientation for myself and local speaker was very useful. And what's great is that this is all on device with no cloud services needed. Now, away from all the big AI features that I used, what I really appreciate the most was the little things like how fast and smooth the animations of the overall OS, and especially how much more usable and fluid things are in the camera app, even down to the improved lens transitions. The feature set of One UI was already stacked, and with Samsung now supporting seven years of OS version updates, including security, this is a big win for the end users and just means you will have a lot on tap when it comes to discovering all the software features that will assist and help you day to day. If not live already, check out our One UI 6.1 full features breakdown video and also our additional hidden features. The experience when it comes to the battery life and charging with the 5,000 milliampere hour battery on the S24 Ultra has been good and par for the course, which is to say when using it in a standard performance profile, auto brightness, QHD, and 120 Hertz with mobile data only, you should be getting between six to eight hours of full screen on time. Charging times are expected pretty much to be the same with full charge around one hour or just over with 60 to 65% charge in 30 minutes. I will say I still think Samsung needs to move to a 65 watt charging standard, allowing for full charge in about 45 minutes for the ultra devices and the plus models using 45 watts while the base model still using 25 watts. Some may actually want an increase in wireless charging speeds to 30 watts, but here is actually hoping Samsung finds a way to support a magnetic standard, allowing for wireless charging in a standing position, allowing for the phone to be more useful when wirelessly charging for things like video calls and more. I'm still confident enough at this stage to give the S24 Ultra my phone of the year. And I could perfectly understand if it seems a bit too premature to say that right now, but I'm standing on business and calling it. Do you have the S24 Ultra? What's been your experience with it so far? Or are you still considering the upgrade or switch? Let us know in the comment section below. For the latest news in the world of Samsung Daily, be sure to visit us at sammobile.com. And for the latest videos on YouTube with Sam Mobile TV, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications, and we will see you next time.